how important is sleep on TRT? I am a night owl. On and off TRT, sleep is the single most important thing in your life. Go ahead, Ali. This is the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. And if you want to learn all about the science-based information on this topic, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and you'll be on your way. That's what I was going to say. Like, it, it doesn't matter if you're on TRT or, you know, if you take friggin' a multivitamin. I mean, sleep's important no matter what. It's not going to work better if you sleep more, but it's also not going to necessarily work better if you sleep less. Just like anything, like you have to sleep in order to have good insulin sensitivity and, I don't know, produce all the other hormones that your body wants you to produce. It, it, Presumably, you recover we as hard as you train. Presumably, we spend 33% of our life in a sleeping state, okay? Eight hours sleep, 16 hours awake. Your body is designed to hibernate slash sleep for 33% of your lifespan. Think about that. Nature, God, the universe, whatever you believe in, whatever put us here, designed us to spend 33% of our life, whether we like it or not, in a particular state. And you're asking how important that is. What if I cut your income by 33%? How much would that impact you? <laughs> I like that one. I'm going to use that. Could you talk about the maximum dose for melatonin uh, for optimization? Do you have any experience with that? The melatonin that I've used in the past is sublingual. I've done three to five drops under the tongue before bedtime. I think that uh, there's a risk in using exogenous melatonin long-term. I think it kind of maybe uh, suppresses the pineal gland a little bit and kind of halters your own production. You become somewhat dependent and then you build a tolerance and it stops being as effective. I like to let the body make its own melatonin. A couple of things you could do before sleep is avoid electronics for a solid hour or two, excuse me, before bed. I know we all fall asleep with our laptops, televisions, and iPhones. Um, notice I say iPhones because Samsungs are not real phones, so flame away all you want. Um, but people always fall asleep with their screen, right? And at the end of the day, that light is telling your brain, we're nocturnal creatures. When the sun is up, we're, we're up and, and, and alert. And then when the sun goes down, we start to get tired because our, our brain tells our, our pineal gland to go ahead and release melatonin. It's time to go to sleep. And when we have constant UV light in our face uh, before bed, our melatonin levels are suppressed. So trying to relax a little bit at night, try not to be on your phone. It's also a stress factor when you're reading news and politics and ongoing events uh, on your phone and on social media all night long. And then you have to turn that switch off instantly rather than letting it kind of taper down. Uh, that combined with the UV light is going to suppress your own melatonin. So make it a point to spend a solid hour before you're ready to go to bed with no electronics and trying to relax and listen to music or do whatever it is you want to do to kind of settle down for the night. And then make sure that your hormones are in place. Pregnenolone, uh, I think, does a nice job. And then me personally, CJC-1295 and Ipamorelin, uh, 200 micrograms, uh, fasted before bed, knocks me out for a solid eight or nine hours. And um, that's something that we, we, we offer all our patients at the clinic um, who are on TRT to, to supplement with that. It's a growth hormone secretagogue, and it gives you ridiculous amount of sleep and rest. So... Uh, I like that better than, than melatonin. Melatonin, I think you, people tend to build a dependence on, and I'm not a big fan of, of supplementing with it, unless absolutely needed. Mm -hmm. Allie, you have anything to add on sleep? Go a long way. What's that? With blue light glasses, yeah. Yeah, they're like a very affordable way, and they do work. Like Some people question them, but I remember the first time I used them, and then traveled and I was in a hotel and I felt like I was blinded by the TV because I forgot my glasses. And I was like, okay. And my aura ring data changed to start to use them when you're watching TV, you know, at night. But, you know, to keep the TV out of the bedroom, maybe read a book like we used to when we were younger and make it a book that has nothing to do with what you do for a living. And I'm saying that because I'm calling myself out too, because obviously reading about training is fun, but it starts that stress cycle, like Gil was saying, and definitely social media, like, you know, if somebody's wrong on the internet, that's going to send stress hormones and you're going to stay awake for a while and your sleep's going to be all messed up. Have an orgasm, pass out. <laughs> <laughs> 
What are your thoughts on MK677 as a viable oral GH secretagogue option for enhancing sleep? And if so, how little should be taken for this purpose? Before we continue, if you appreciate the content we bring to this channel, check out the Amazon links in the description of this video. These are the links to the products we use, going from supplements, protein powder, pre, post, intra-workout, anti-aging cream, sunscreen, needles and syringes to inject, and so on. If you'd like to purchase one of those products, please use the direct link so that it will earn us a few cents as a tip, and you'll be guided directly to the products we recommend. Thanks in advance. All links should work on the US, Canadian, and UK Amazon stores. I see one indication for MK677. That is the name on the SARM sites, even though it's not a SARM, it's a ghrelin agonist. The medical name for it is ibutamorin, when available through pharmacies, and we do prescribe it on an as-needed basis. And I find it is only indicated for people who are severely underweight and need to gain weight because they have no appetite. It is a very good appetite increaser. That is what it does. It will increase water weight and it will increase your appetite significantly. It is up to you to make sure that you're eating the correct things because it's going to want to make you raid the fridge at two in the morning. However, it does have a very negative impact on blood glucose and insulin sensitivity. It will lead to pre-diabetic and type two diabetes stages uh, in a matter of a couple of months. So I am not a big fan of it. And if you need a secretagogue for sleep, CJC 1295 and Ipamorelin, as I mentioned earlier, are very viable options. And I do not think that they are going to compare to ibutamorin slash MK677 when it comes to that specific benefit. If you're a male and you weigh 150 pounds and you tell me I cannot get to 170 because I just can't eat enough food, that is a fair indication to try a course of 12 and a half to 25 milligrams of ibutamorin in the morning and see if we can increase your appetite. And it normally does. I've seen guys put on you know, 10, 12, 15 pounds in four to six weeks using this medication. Never would I use it for sleep. And now give this video a thumbs up and go watch one of these videos to learn a ton more about TRT and hormone optimization.